I've been doing disaster work for a very long time. And when doing disaster work, you realize that it's not just uh, uh, courses of nature that are impacting, but it's also the uh, abuse of land usage and the abuse of the way in which we uh, treat the environment. To uh, think that we are people who have an infinite amount of resources that we can just continuously mine, harvest, uh, or exploit uh, is to um, not pay attention to what's that, what that is doing to the air and to the water and to the soil. We're depleting it at such a great rate that we cannot continue to deplete it at that, uh, in this manner and expect not only the earth to survive, human or anything else to survive. This is the fastest disappearing delta in the world. It's one of the newer deltas in the world, but it's the fastest disappearing delta in the world. It's for many reasons, but uh, climate change uh, is, a, uh, is a big factor in that it causes sea level rise. And as we are a delta area, uh, people live at sea level. <laughs> so any type of sea level rise and the subsidence that takes place along with it with, uh, in a, any kind of delta, we have relative sea level rise, which means we have disappearing communities. Uh, the communities that have lived here have lived here for generations. And as a result, they're very close-knit, they're very self-reliant, they're very sustainable, uh, resilient kind of folks. They like to take care of themselves. You know, they don't want handouts from anyone else. They don't want to be supported by anyone else. They've been supporting themselves for generations. And so to all of a sudden be in a situation where they can no longer do that is really traumatic for not only for individuals, but for whole communities. The water comes and surrounds their homes uh, every time there is a major storm or even a big rainstorm. And uh, when that happens, there's saltwater intrusion, it kills gardens, it brings uh, different types of metals and leads in that are from the industrial areas. Uh, so it's hard to make gardens, it's hard to raise animals. And uh, the folks who have been self-sufficient are no longer able to be self-sufficient or self-sustaining. And uh, because of the close-knitness, uh, there is a, uh, a feeling of reciprocity. It's very much in the religious tradition of mutual aid, reciprocity, and folks really being uh, a community that cares for each other. I have learned so much from the communities in South Louisiana. Uh, they are some of the communities that are so close to the traditional base Christian church that uh, the Bible speaks of, that Paul speaks of, with the sharing and caring and the hospitality, a hospitality of bringing anyone in. You're no longer a stranger once you're in the midst of, of their uh, community. And that's what we're called to be as Christians. We're called to be that community that shares our resources, shares our love, shares our compassion, shares our hospitality. They are so close to the edge that to continue to uh, rebuild becomes economically impossible. And it, it has an incredible toll on the people going through disaster after disaster after disaster. Um, the, um, just the struggle to rebuild, the struggle to keep your family together, your pets, your, you know, the whole gamut. You can't keep doing that. Uh, yes, we'd love to see it restored. Uh, yes, we'd love to see the whole, you know, uh, delta restored, but we are not going to restore the delta in time to save some of the communities, even if everything, all measures were put in place right now. We need to be uh, uh, <laughs> caring, reaching out to those who are uh, affected uh, with the impact immediately. And then we also need to look down the road uh, as far as what we're doing that is causing this and to reverse that as much as possible. God gave us the responsibility to be caregivers. And, you know, he left, you know, this incredible creation with all these species. And as uh, the climate changes, uh, species are diminishing. Uh, we're seeing uh, the extinction of so many different things. And they're part of us. They're part of the world. They're, uh, they're part of who we are. And, you know, are we going to become the next extinction? Uh, we need to care for what God's given us. 
and that's a moral mandate. I would love to see people of faith study the issues of cause and effect of uh, how we are a web of life, uh, that we're not just uh, separate entities in separate uh, areas, that one area of the, of the world coughs, another area, you know, sneezes, uh, that there is this uh, um, relationship in this web of life and that uh, maybe they hadn't heard of this region, you know, because it's not necessarily a destination to go to other than New Orleans, but uh, to learn more about this area, to uh, study about this area, and then to also make a commitment that not only they do appropriate uh, work within their own area of the country or world, wherever they are, but also to make a commitment to stand up for areas that are, are uh, on the critical list. And we are definitely on the critical list.